Tom. Son, this electrical inspection sheet looks like a good idea. Let's start by checking the fuse box where the electricity enters our house and is distributed to the various rooms. The chart shows which rooms fuses protect. In this fuse box, all fuses should be 15 amperes, or amps as they're commonly called. In many of the newer homes, appliance circuits are wired with larger wire and will safely take fuses of 20 amps. Now, this is especially true of kitchens and other rooms in which there are many electrical appliances. However, if we use fuses larger than 15 amps at our house, there's danger of overloading a circuit. Now, Tom, let's check our house circuits for overloading. Let's look behind this Davenport. Boy, if all these cords were carrying electricity at the same time, the fuse on this circuit would certainly blow. We'll have to fix this. You know, Tom, I remember a demonstration by Mr. Pothast, an electrical safety expert. He showed us what can happen when a circuit is overloaded. In a demonstration, he put too many appliances on one circuit and the fuse blew. Even that 20 amp fuse hadn't been large enough. Next, he inserted a penny behind the fuse to complete the circuit. The results were frightening. A fuse is made to protect the wiring. If the proper size fuse isn't used and the circuit is overloaded, the wiring will overheat and cause a fire. Now let's see, this next section of the inspection sheet deals with faulty electrical equipment. First we'll check appliance cords. Now that plug looks okay, Tom. Notice the tight connections. Here's something that needs attention. That wire could very easily contact the socket shell and make the whole lamp dangerous. When electricity is used to produce heat, as with the heat lamp, the brass shell socket may become extremely dangerous. Notice this charred insulator. It's actually burned away between the socket and the shell. Now the socket can easily touch the brass shell. Watch what happens when the faulty socket is checked with a test light. The lamp lights because a circuit has been completed between the brass shell and the ground. These lamps could be just as dangerous as the faulty brass shell socket we saw a moment ago. Therefore, it's important to keep lamps and appliances in good repair or replace the ones that can't be fixed. The next part here asks us to note any improper use of electrical equipment. For instance, real danger can occur if such equipment is used near water. First, let's check the bathroom for electrical hazards. That's the idea, Tom. This outlet was installed for my electric shaver. It shouldn't be used for any other equipment. Our kitchen light might be dangerous if we touch the chain and the faucet or the water in the sink at the same time. This light chain should be spliced with an insulated link. Now let's inspect some of our electrical appliances. Say, here's something that must be fixed. This damage was caused because people pulled on the cord instead of on the plug cap. Whenever we disconnect an appliance, we must pull on the cap and not on the cord. Tom, 
Show me the correct way to unplug and then plug in that cord. That's right. Remember, always pull on the plug cap, not on the cord. Now look, there's something I hadn't noticed. I remember seeing a fire caused by a worn cord under a rug. It's a good thing that fire was in an electrical demonstration, not in someone's house. The trouble all started when an extension cord had been placed under a rug. The cord was old and its insulation was getting brittle. Friction caused by objects passing over the wire broke off the insulation. When the insulation broke away, the bare wire came in contact with the rug. Now the wires become hot and the rug is starting to burn. We could have a serious fire here. Many people get hurt every day because of carelessness like this. Such electrical hazards must be eliminated. The last section asks about the grounding of electrical equipment. Let's check the basement first. This washing machine could be dangerous for mom to use if the manufacturer hadn't grounded it properly. You see that special plug? It makes the washing machine safe. A third wire leads from the motor frame to this third prong, which automatically grounds the appliance. That ground wire will keep mom from being electrocuted if the motor should ever become faulty. This is the only type of outlet this three-prong plug will fit. The third wire from the outlet is attached to a water pipe to complete the ground. Some older power tools and appliances are not equipped with this safety feature. You see, my electric drill wasn't grounded when I bought it, but I made it safe by attaching this third wire as a ground. To be safe, this ground wire must be attached to a positive ground, like this electrical conduit or a water pipe. Now we're ready to plug in the drill. Well, son, let's get some dinner. Boy, don't those hams look good. Tom, wait, don't touch that plug. Remember, I warned you never to turn on or off any electric appliance while you're touching something wet. Well, this motor is not grounded, and when you're standing on that wet grass, you could become a conductor of electricity by just unplugging the cord. Here, I'll show you what could happen. The electricity could flow from the motor switch through your arm, then your body, and down your legs to the wet grass. If so, you would have provided a path for the current. You might have been electrocuted. An electric motor which is not properly grounded is dangerous. Watch what happens when a test light is connected to a water faucet and then to a faulty motor. You see, enough electricity is being carried from the defective motor to light a 15-watt bulb. That much current will kill you. Now a heating element, like the one in mom's electric hot plate, is attached to the faulty motor and then to the water faucet. Notice that the wire gets red hot when the defective motor is turned on. Remember how I made my drill safe by attaching a ground wire? Well, now you'll see how this ground will protect you. Watch closely. First, the faulty motor is hooked up so that it will run. The ground wire, which is connected to the motor, is then touched to the faucet. The fuse blows and the motor stops. Well, son, we've completed our inspection. Let's check back and see what we've learned. Always remember to use the correct size fuse for each circuit. If you insert the wrong size fuse or some substitute for the fuse, and if the wire is overloaded, the wire will become hot and cause a fire. Make sure all plug caps are correctly attached to cords. Check the condition of all cords and sockets. If there are any bare spots in a wire or any faulty sockets, repair or replace them immediately 
before anyone gets hurt. Treat electrical appliances with care. When you unplug an appliance, be sure to pull on the plug cap and not on the cord. Watch out, a frayed extension cord under a rug can cause a fire. Remember, don't touch any electrical appliance while you're standing on any damp surface or in contact with a radiator, water faucet, or similar object. You might become an electrical conductor. All electric motors should be properly grounded or they can become deadly hazards too. Use a three-prong plug or attach a third wire to ground the appliance. A motor which is not grounded properly can transmit sufficient electricity through the metal cover of an appliance to light a 15-watt lamp. That's enough current to kill you. Well, son, we've finished our electrical inspection. I hope your classmates have completed theirs. Is your home electrically safe?